Hey guys, welcome back to All Things Graft. In today's video, I'm going to try to give you a complete breakdown of the overall graft transaction processing fee and provide a few examples of fees one would expect to pay in different types of payment scenarios. Now, as many of you already know, the graft payment network is being developed to resemble and work very similar to traditional payment networks. This means that like traditional payment network fees, the overall graft transaction fee is comprised of various small fees which are paid for by the merchant and awarded to network participants that help process a transaction. In order to understand all the various graft transaction fees, let's first take a look at how traditional payment network fees are structured through a visual example and explore how each participant on these networks are awarded. In a traditional payment network like Visa's, for example, the overall transaction fee is comprised of various small fees that are charged by various network participants. These normally include the merchant service provider, a hardware and software vendor, a payment processor and an acquiring bank, the company network themselves, in this case Visa, and finally the issuing bank. Now, the transaction fee charged by each of these participants varies depending upon all sorts of different scenarios. To keep things simple, however, let's just assume that all of these network participants charge a flat percentage fee per transaction that looks something like this. By adding up all of these small fees, you can see that the total transaction fee comes out to be around 3%, which is the average percentage fee merchants usually pay per transaction when accepting credit and debit card payments. Now, in the same way that the overall Visa network transaction fee is comprised of various small fees, the overall graph transaction fee is also comprised of the same. Notice, however, that the overall transaction fee on the graph network is much lower than Visa's average transaction fee of 3%. This is one of the benefits of accepting digital currencies as a form of payment through a decentralized payment network like graphs. In fact, transaction fees on the graph network can actually be much lower depending on the type of payment scenario the merchant is presented with. Before we start explaining each of these type of scenarios though, let's quickly go over the role of each of these participants on the graph network along with their associated fees. In a typical retail transaction, a merchant processing a payment through graft could require the services of any of the following graph network participants. The merchant service provider, the proxy supernode owners, the pay-in and pay-out brokers, the owners of the supernodes within the authorization sample, and finally the owner of the mining node. Now, in order for a merchant to begin processing cryptocurrency transactions through a traditional hardware terminal, the merchant will likely require the use of a merchant service provider. Merchant service providers are a very important part of the payment industry that provide merchants with all the necessary software and hardware tools to process transactions and run a successful business. Merchant service providers also provide merchants with any necessary customer support to help solve any issues a merchant may experience while conducting business. On the graph network, the merchant service provider will also act as the payment gateway, allowing communication between the merchant's hardware terminal and the rest of the payment network. Fees charged by merchant service providers vary depending upon the needs of the merchant and the service provider's business model. Traditionally, however, a merchant service provider normally charges a fee of around 0.2 to 0.3%, plus a few cents for every transaction. However, to keep things simple, we'll use a flat fee of around 0.4%. Now, in order for a buyer's wallet or a merchant's terminal to communicate with the rest of the payment network, each of these devices will first have to connect to their corresponding proxy supernodes. Proxy supernodes allow communication between mobile wallets or merchant terminals and the rest of the payment network and charge a fee of 0.05% each every time a transaction is processed. Now, even though a buyer's wallet requires communication with the network and its corresponding proxy supernode charges a fee, the fee is still paid for by the merchant along with all other fees. Now, depending upon the payment method chosen by the buyer and the payout method chosen by the merchant, transactions on the graph network may require the use of pay-in and pay-out brokers. Pay-in and pay-out brokers allow for the exchange of various cryptocurrencies as well as fiat currencies within the graph network and charge a fee of 0.25% every time an exchange is needed in order to process a transaction or perform a payout. All exchanges performed on the graph network are both trustless and automatic and require the use of graph's authorization sample in order for an exchange to occur. The graph authorization sample is a group of eight supernodes which perform transaction authorizations and act as an arbitrator for any change performed on the network. The authorization sample charges a fee of 0.5% for every transaction, which is distributed evenly among all eight supernodes that are part of the sample. 
And last but not least, we have the mining node, which is responsible for settling every transaction that occurs on the graph network and writing them into the blockchain. The fees that are charged by the mining node are set by proxy supernode owners, which in most cases will be the merchant service provider. This fee allows the merchant service providers to prioritize transactions according to their business model and the merchant's needs. The minimum fee that can be set for a mining node is 0.1 graft. So now that we understand all of the different players and their fees, let's take a look at a few different payment scenarios a merchant may find themselves in and calculate the fees for each of these scenarios. Let's begin by first taking a look at a scenario where a customer wants to pay a merchant with Bitcoin and the merchant would like to receive payout in US dollars. Let's assume that the merchant has a brick and mortar business and requires the use of a traditional hardware terminal that would normally be provided by a merchant service provider. In this scenario, the merchant would require the use of the following graph network participants. By adding up all of their associated fees, the merchant in this example would be responsible for paying a total fee of 1.5% plus 0.1 graft for this transaction. Using a $20 Bitcoin transaction as an example, the merchant would only pay a fee of around 30 cents and receive a total of $19.70. This payout would initially be made in the form of the Graph USDG payout token or an alternate US dollar tethered currency coin, which would then be converted to the US dollar and deposited into the merchant's account at a future point in time. Due to the nature and volatility of cryptocurrencies, payout tokens, or alternate tethered currency coins, will likely be the most frequently chosen payout method by merchants. For our next example, let's assume the exact same scenario, only instead of the merchant wanting to receive dollars as payout, they would prefer to receive graft. In this scenario, the merchant would no longer need to use a payout broker, and the total overall transaction fee would drop down from 1.5% plus 0.1 graft to 1.25% plus 0.1 graft. Using the same $20 Bitcoin transaction example, the merchant in this case would only pay a fee of 25 cents and receive a total of $19.75 in graft. For our third example, let's assume the same scenario, only instead of the consumer paying with Bitcoin, they would prefer to pay with graft. In this scenario, the merchant would no longer need to use a paying broker, and the total overall transaction fee would drop down from 1.25% plus 0.1 graft to 1% plus 0.1 graft. Using a $20 graft transaction as an example, the merchant in this case would only pay a fee of 20 cents and receive a total of $19.80 in graft. Now for our final example, let's assume the exact same scenario, only the merchant in this example doesn't require the need of a traditional hardware terminal and will instead opt for using the Graft mobile point of sale wallet. In this case, the merchant wouldn't require the services of a merchant service provider and the overall transaction fee would drop from 1% plus 0.1 Graft down to 0.6% plus 0.1 Graft. Using the same $20 graph transaction as an example, the merchant in this case would only pay a fee of 12 cents and receive a total of $19.88 in graft. You can obviously see from this example the benefit of using a cryptocurrency like graft as a form of payment in real time compared to fiat currencies on traditional payment systems. This same exact value transaction on the Visa network would cost a merchant a total of 60 cents. Now that may not seem as much at first glance, but when you multiply that by the number of transactions processed on a given day, and then that by the number of days in a month, you begin to realize the benefits of transacting with a cryptocurrency like Graft. Of course, this isn't taking into account the volatility risk of holding Graft. My main point here is the potential savings a merchant could earn should a cryptocurrency like Graft ever attain mainstream adoption. Now, even at the max graph transaction fee of 1.5%, with the option of accepting any cryptocurrency and receiving payout in US dollars, graft is still a better option. Also, please remember that all of these scenarios involve processing a transaction using graph's real-time authorization feature, which is mostly suitable for the retail environment. Graft can also be used for sending cryptocurrency payments in the more traditional way in which the sender is the one paying an even smaller transaction fee. Don't forget that Graft will also allow users to transfer Graft completely free by simply proving their identity to the network using zero-knowledge proof authentication technology without the user having to compromise their privacy. I hope this video helped you to better understand all of the various participants on the Graft network, their associated transaction fees, and the various payment scenarios a merchant could experience when processing a cryptocurrency payment. If you liked this video, please hit that like button, share it, and don't forget to subscribe for future videos. 
Until next time though, this is All Things Craft, signing off.